This is the August um, 2022 Recreation Parks Commission meeting, and we'd like to call the meeting to order. Okay, I'll go ahead and read the order and then do roll. Um, so due to the governor's recent order, all members of the Recreation Parks Commission are participating virtually. Um, for virtual meetings, um, commission members will be muted, and then at the time they need to be heard, they can raise their hand and then um, unmute themselves. It is necessary to take a roll call vote. Um, so for that process, the commission member will be recognized and will state their name and then cast their vote. Today's meeting is a public meeting. Per the notice, citizens can listen to the meeting if they contact the city manager's office and make the necessary arrangements. All meetings are live streamed on the city's YouTube channel, which can be accessed via the city website. Um, and a recording of this meeting can be made available to someone if they have by next Tuesday. Um, so let's go ahead and do a roll. John Gunkel. Oh, here. It's okay. Um, Sean Hawkins. Here. Okay. Um, we actually have two new commission members that have joined us. However, they are not able to make it today. Um, the new commission member um, the first one is Michael Green, and the other one is Michelle Portman. Both will be joining us in September. Um, so they are not here today. Um, Taylor Ansley is also not with us today. No. Um, John France. No, sorry. John France. Okay. Bob Hartwell. Here. Okay. George Peterson. George Peterson. Mashika Jefferson. Mashika. Here. Okay, there you go. Joe Cassidy. Here. Let's see if we have quorum. We have one, two. So we don't have quorum at this time. Um, so we won't be able to approve the minutes. Maybe if somebody joins in at the later date, but we can go ahead and roll into updates if that's okay. Did we want to uh, have the discussion on the in-person meeting before we did the updates? Uh, that's up to you. I can um, go over the information and then um, I could also ask that um, <clears throat> Felicia emails um, the following information out to everyone so that you um, have a written copy um, of what um, I'm going to go over here. Uh, it's expected um, on August 15th that the governor uh, will lift, Governor Cooper will lift his state of emergency. Um, with that being said, um, it's very possible uh, that Mayor Joins may consider doing the same. Um, that will, the reason why we began doing remote meetings uh, was because of the state of emergency um, that was set in place by Governor Cooper. Um, however, at the June 21st uh, City Council meeting, <clears throat> um, there was an amendment to the ordinance for uh, remote participation in meetings. Um, and I'm kind of go over these these two things and then we'll probably I'll have a recommendation for you chair um, at the conclusion of this meeting. Uh, at the at the conclusion of what I'm going to go over to see uh, if you're comfortable with moving forward um, with uh, with my recommendation. Um, but the amendment um, basically is as follows. Uh, individual members of boards and commissions um, to participate remotely in their board and commission meetings if they if there are scheduling conflicts that make in person participation impractical impracticable and boards and commissions by majority vote in person to continue as a body with remote meetings irrespective of the state of emergency or the status of such 
except for hearings and case reviews, which must be conducted in person unless all parties consent to the same being conducted remotely. Uh, although the ordinance amendment does not require in-person hearings um, for some um, abortion commissions, um, bodies may elect to conduct hearings and other such meetings in person. Um, uh, as a note from our city attorney's office, uh, she's uh, Angela Carmen says that it would be good for the boards and commissions to include in its motion or resolution to approve the continuation or resumption of remote meetings at the time period for such, even if it's until further notice. Um, and she did attach a resolution that could be used uh, to vote on uh, by the Recreation and Parks Commission as an example, if that's something that the commission wishes to continue with. Um, I wanna get further clarification from my city attorney's office, uh, but I, I do believe that what she said was pretty clear was that um, the Recreation and Parks Commission could vote to continue meetings uh, remotely um, as a majority vote. I do believe that majority vote has to take place in person um, in order to continue with those remote meetings. Um, I do not believe that there is a timeline or stipulation that says that we could not uh, continue this conversation in September and maybe get someone from the city attorney's office to join the meeting, uh, maybe John Lawson to go over uh, exactly how uh, the Recreation Parks Commission could vote to continue the meetings remotely, or do we go back to in-person meetings? Um, personally, um, I think that remote meetings are very um, convenient. Um, I think there are some positives to it in terms of timing. Um, there's some sort, there's a time period of preparation, not only for staff, but also for the commission um, and just drive time uh, to prepare for meetings. Uh, when you meet remotely, that time is, is reduced. Um, I think the drawback, um, Chair, is the level of engagement and participation um, it, with remote meetings. Um, we've had, I think, Felicia, we have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've had more meetings where we have not had quorum during while we've met remotely um, versus the uh, <clears throat> attendance that we have when we do meet in person. And some of that's due to the wonderful food and beverages that we provide at our meetings. Um, but it would, uh, even if the Recreation and Parks Commission did elect to continue <clears throat> those meetings uh, remotely, it would be my suggestion that at least once a quarter uh, or twice a quarter that we do meet in person. There's a different level of engagement um, when you're able to see someone face to face. Um, I remember on multiple multiple occasions, whether it was um, Mr. Cassidy or Mr. Hartwell or even yourself, um, Chair, who you know, kind of at the conclusion of those meetings, have kind of walked over to him and asked, kind of just follow up questions about just the issues that you had that or concerns of maybe about something that we didn't discuss in the commission meeting. Um, so with your uh, with your blessing. Um, I would like to continue the um, remote meeting for September. I ask that we have someone from the city attorney's office present um, at that meeting to go over exactly what we need to do uh, to move forward and, and have also have an opportunity to answer any questions that you may have. Um, again, it's only uh, expected that Governor Cooper will lift the state of emergency on August the 15th, but a lot can happen between now and then. Um, I think it would be prudent of us to kind of see how that plays out and then prepare ourselves for that discussion as we, as we move forward. Um, and at this point, I'd be more than willing to accept comments or thoughts uh, about what, what I just discussed. Okay, the way I understand it is, I have no problem with continuing through September, but I guess after that, we need to meet and determine as a group whether we want to continue the uh, remote meeting. And you said, I think, I thought I heard we had to do that and to vote on it in person. Is that what you said? Uh, 
the way that the message was uh, understood from the city attorney's office as, as it was written is that that vote would have to take place in person yes okay i did hear but right i will then. but i will get clarification on that and um from the city attorney's office and if that if that is the case then that's a that's a vote that we could take up in october or even at maybe at our, at our october meeting if we're forced to if that meeting has if that vote has to take place in person okay all right okay i mean that sounds reasonable to me so we would just basically have a vote on whether we want to continue the remote or meet in person in october then that's my understanding yeah i think the the next possible time to meet in person would be at our october meeting um, based on the information that I received from the city attorney's office. It is, it's possible um, to meet in September uh, in person. Um, but I think that we should, you know, that given the fact that we don't have a quorum. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, and, no, I'm, and that, I'm I just think yeah. that it may, may be better for us to kind of bring that back in September um, and have that discussion then, Chair. Okay, sounds good. So, William, would that be that? Would that be every if we do a, a vote on it and a, and agreed upon? Would that be every in person or, or quarterly? You said um, it could be either or. Um, okay. I want to I'm going to ask those those same questions to the city attorney's office and see if that is something that um, could it be a mixture of both. Um, I know that for the past three years, going on three years now that we've been doing it this way, not only us, but other boards and commissions, but a lot of that was due to the pandemic. Um, I know that locally, some of the numbers dealing with COVID have begun to go up, especially in our area, um, down in Mecklenburg, Charlotte area. Um, so it's really hard to tell what the governor does. If, if he doesn't lift the order, then it's a moot point, um, Sean, because we would just continue to meet remotely. Um, but the ordinance mm -hmm. did change due to the pandemic. You know, we've never had to go through something like this before. Um, and that was the, the real reason why we began to meet remotely, not only for the safety of the commission, boards and commission members, but also for the safety of our staff. Okay. What we can do too, is we can send that out, as William said, we can send an email out to everyone and that'll give the members who weren't able to make it today an opportunity to kind of voice before the September meeting. Um, and also just kind of reiterate how important it is to attend the meetings regularly. Yep. So Chair, if you're okay with that, um, we'll get some, um, between now and August 15th, we'll try to have some information out uh, to, the, to the commission, kind of outlining what, uh, what those steps are and then also give you an opportunity to ask any questions that we can probably get the majority of the answers to prior to our September meeting um, and share that with everyone so that everybody is on the same page, if you're if that's okay with you. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. All right. Um, and I know it's not on the um, directly on the agenda, but I did want to kind of give you a, a brief update on where we are with some of our um, capital um capital projects um we did uh i think i presented some information um i think it was probably back in our may meeting or maybe even at our june no i think at our may meeting uh about a possible <clears throat> um allotment of capital funding from limited obligation bonds um the city had the debt capacity of about 50 million dollars to allocate um towards capital projects. Um, the Recreation and Parks Department was the recipient of $17.8 million um, of uh, capital funding. Um, and I did have a breakdown of um, where that funding would be distributed. Um, uh, we received, and I'll, uh, again, I'll get Felicia to email. Uh, we'll make sure we email this um, out to you. Um, but we did receive uh, funding uh, for uh, 
several projects, which include additional renovations to Helen Nichols Park and developing a walking track in the amount of a, a million dollars. Um, we have eight hundred thousand dollars for um, improvements at Granville Park, uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars for Haynes Hosiery Recreation Center upgrades, three hundred fifty thousand dollars for uh, upgrading the walking trail at Kimberly Park, um, an additional one million dollars for um, I would call them phase two improvements at Long Creek Park, um, an additional $250,000 for uh, Nelson Malloy Park, uh, $1 million for Miller Park improvements. Um, we did get $1.5 million to, uh, for the Muddy Creek Greenway and to make some repairs to the stream bank <clears throat> there along that portion of our greenway. Um, $1.5 million for Runnymede Park infrastructure improvements. That's a project that's already underway. A uh, million dollars for uh, recreation center improvements at Sprague Street. Um, One million dollars for additional improvements at Winston Lake Golf Course. Um, we have a one point two million dollar contingency, um, just in case there are unforeseen or project overruns with the um, projects that I just mentioned earlier. And then we also have four point nine million dollars of funding. Um, to make various improvements and facilities throughout our park system that are directly ref, um, tied to deferred maintenance. Um, there's going to be several parking lot um, resurfacings, several pedestrian pathway resurfacings. Uh, we'll be replacing or renovating the fishing pier at Salem Lake, which has been a thorn in our side for a number of years. And uh, we'll be resurfacing several tennis courts um, and we also have the possibility, which would include the possibility and likelihood that we will convert some of those tennis courts into pickleball courts for dedicated pickleball courts. Um, so we did receive that funding um, as part of our uh, 2000, um, 2022-2023 um, budget cycle. Um, and so that's, that's good news for us. Um, I know that Renata and her team are already working on a number of um, a number of those projects and getting those ready for um, for construction, um, bidding or design phases, whichever phase is required at this point. But um, did want to kind of share that with you and let you know that we we did receive some additional funding um, just as anticipated. And so we're, we're excited about that. We're appreciative. Um, we also received one point six million dollars in our normal two-thirds funding for uh, improvements on the Virginia Newell Massey Greenway, which is that stretch of Greenway between um, 311 and Bowen Boulevard that's been closed for a number of years. Um, there's also funding there to uh, provide waterproofing on the exterior of the Polo uh, Park Recreation Center so that we can redo the gym floor. And then there's an, an additional $250,000 to renovate the playground for Haynes Park. And so we received that funding through our normal two thirds funding uh, cycle, uh, which was approved this year. And so we're very, very excited about that. Between those two funding sources, uh, we have about $17.8 million of new money we'll be spending. Um, so I want to share that with you uh, and thank you all for your support and, and dedication to um, ensuring that we're addressing deferred maintenance needs throughout our park system. Anybody have any questions? William, that's wonderful news. It, is there some place we can find a, a breakdown of those projects? Um, I'm going to provide. Uh, I'm going to get the information to Felicia. She'll send a. Uh, we'll send send you guys an email that has a list of what those projects are, all the ones that I went over. Um, it'll also have a breakdown of which parking lots will be resurfaced. Um, the in the interior pedestrian pathways that will be um, renovated uh, and upgraded, um, as well as the tennis court locations um, to be resurfaced as well. And those tennis courts, you know, typically we would go in and you could kind of you could mill the top half inch of the surface and then lay down a new lay down a, a new playing surface, but some of the base failure that we have with our tennis courts, which are causing the cracks, we're going to mill them down to the base, start over from scratch and build them back up. So we should get at least seven to 10 years out of these newly renovated tennis courts once they're redone. Thank you. Um, 
Chair, that's all of the updates that I have um, that I wanted to share with you. Um, uh, there's, well, let me just mention one last thing to you. The, the Anyone that's visited any of our recreation centers knows that a lot of the, the internet speeds at our recreation centers hasn't really been looked at or analyzed for maybe the past, for the, for like the past, for like the past 10, 15 years. So I've been working very, very closely with um, our IS department um, to look at upgrading the internet connect connectivity speeds at our recreation centers. Uh, we have a plan. <clears throat> Some of the centers where we have um, city fiber or AT&T fiber, those facilities would be upgraded to fiber. And those recreation centers where we don't have fiber or it's not available, we'll be going to at least 600 megabytes down with 50, 50 megabyte up internet connection speeds. Um, believe it or not, we still have some locations uh, at our recreation centers that are 10 meg down, 2 meg up internet connection speeds. And uh, imagine going there trying to just have any sort of meeting where you, you needed to have any type of access to cloud services. Uh, it would make it very, very difficult. But working with some of our team members and teammates with our IS department, we're working to actively and aggressively upgrade those um, those internet connections. And so slowly but surely, those internet connection speeds will be uh, being updated over the course of the next six to eight months. Is that being funded through the 17 plus million dollars that you described earlier? Um, yes and no. Um, many of the costs associated with the upgrade to convert, to upgrade the connections um, we can take care of with just our operating budget um, and some of those there are a couple of areas where we're going to get some uh, use a different source of funding to get the internet uh, to get fiber to those areas where, we, where it's really really needed um, we have two locations that uh, the wr anderson recreation center and the bellevue recreation center are two areas where it's going to be fairly difficult um, to upgrade those the speed in those areas and we think that fiber is the best option however the installation costs with uh, getting fiber at just those two locations is extremely expensive and so we'll, we'll be looking at different funding sources for those but i believe that the remainder of the locations we can take care of with just with our operating budget okay thank you mm -hmm. chair those that's the uh, uh the extent of the updates um that i had for you today Again, I will come back with uh, some follow-up information from the city attorney's office to see the best, to, to figure out the best way for the Recreation Parks Commission to navigate moving forward with in-person or remote meetings. Okay. Uh, were we gonna go ahead and do uh, the departmental updates? Well, sure. Actually, sorry, um, we actually now have quorum. John France has joined us. Um, John France, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I'm at the, like uh, to um, vote to approve the minutes, John Gunkel, um, Chair, you may do so. Okay, uh, I, Felicia sent out the the minutes from the, I think it was the June Thanks. meeting, where we just had a discussion on the Jonestown property, and also she included some subsequent information about the. Um, the budget year over year increase in the budget. So, can somebody put, give us a motion to approve the June minutes? I make a motion that the June minutes would be received and adopted. Okay. Second that motion. Give us a second that. Uh, that was me, Sean. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and then we just need to do a roll call vote. Felicia, excuse me. Yes, Bob. Can you hear me? Yes. I have Are a, you there? I have a terrible connection. I'm sorry with this Zoom, but I, if the last meeting was June, can how can can the motion must be made by someone who's present, mustn't it? Not necessarily. There's nothing um, that states that in the um, in the ordinance. 
Okay. All right. Wouldn't <laughs> never mind. Wouldn't happen in Massachusetts. Anyway, okay. I find that a little odd. Well, I did read the minutes, so I, I know I know what's in the minutes. I didn't want to get caught up later in a technical problem, that's all. I understand. Yeah, the ordinance simply says um, that the members who are present at the time of the meeting can make a motion. Um, so, yeah. If you guys are comfortable moving forward, we can do that or um, we can table it or if somebody else would like to make a motion. Okay. Well, I, I withdraw my motion. Uh, but I was thinking, though, that... Uh, if you had the minutes, everything is in the minutes, what you all decided on to vote on. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Well, I can make a motion to approve them. Okay. All right. So John Gogol is making a motion to approve. Um, can we have a second? I second that motion. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a roll call vote. Um, give me one sec here. Ah. Okay, um, so the motion was made by John Gunkel. So yes, um, Sean Hawkins made the second. Um, John France, would you like to vote to approve the minutes? Um, I'll approve. Okay. Bob Hartwell? Yes. Okay. Mashika Jefferson, would you like to vote to approve the June minutes? Uh, yes, I approve. Okay, thank you. Joe Cassidy, would you like to vote to approve the June minutes? Yes. Okay, great. The minutes are approved. Okay, now we can continue with the updates. Leah, would you like to go over the uh, Recreation Center updates for the commission uh, first, and then we'll go to special facilities, and then we'll go into updates from our maintenance center with Capital Projects with Renata. Yes, sir. So good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see you guys. Um, I want to go over a couple of things that we've been doing this summer in recreation centers. Um, you know, I think last time I saw you guys, we were just starting off with uh, summer camps. Now we're about to finish. We actually just started yesterday with our after school registration. We have after school programming going on at 10 centers. Um, I believe that flyer is on there. So if anybody's looking for childcare, uh, 2.30 to 5.30, we do offer it. Uh, make sure that you send your information our way. Um, along with that, we have noticed an increase, a great increase in our attendance in our programs. Um, our basketball gyms, as you guys know, have brand new courts. They look great. Um, we are also getting a little bit more of an interest in basketball leagues and other groups coming to use our facilities. So with that, we're following suit with what a lot of other municipalities and schools are doing. And we're moving to a clear bag policy for our gyms starting August 1st. So yesterday that went into effect. So anybody that comes to use our gyms, whether it be just for open play, a basketball league, dodgeball leagues, our internal leagues, external leagues, now we're requiring everybody to bring back clear bags in with them. That's just to promote safety amongst our participants and for our staff as well. Um, I think last time we met was early June and I don't believe Carl Russell was open then. Now it is open. Um, hopefully you guys have had an opportunity to go by and see all the wonderful improvements of that facility. I bring that up because we have started to have an increased participation out there. And also we're ending up our, Felicia has it on screen right now, our movies in the park. So our last movies in the park will be at Helen Nichols Park, which should be right there with Carl Russell on August 20th to see Sing 2. We encourage everybody to come out. And also next to that, which will actually be next Wednesday already, um, we will host oh, a cool. movies in the pool event at Bolton Pool. So that'll be August 10th. And that is all. Oh, and then we have our walking club. Hey, Leah, I had a question about the, the movies. I'm just curious, how is the participation for the movies? It's been good. This year we've had um, attendance about 120 at each location. 
Okay. You know, it goes up and How's down. Uh, we've been lucky with the weather this year. You know, I think in years past, we've never made it through all three movies. So knock on wood, and hopefully this year it looks like we will. Usually they get rained out, but we kind of changed it up a little bit this year. If you notice the locations that we had, um, Felicia, if you're able to go back to that flyer, you know, we always try to spread those movies out across Winston. We want everybody to have an opportunity to um, access them. But this year, um, because, you know, it's so challenging. We get staff together. We get the licensing. We do all the promotions for it. And then it rains. You know, summertime, you get those good afternoon thunderstorms about five, six o'clock. And then we have to cancel the event. So this year, we actually linked up a lot of our um, movies along with the facility that would have a rec center so that if we canceled it, we could move indoors. It wouldn't be that same fun outdoor experience, but at least that way, you know, can continue on because there are a lot of work set up. So the participation has been really good. And then we all usually have a hot dog vendor out there. Um, it's a real good family event. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It's good. Yeah. Um, also, um, I've been working really hard this summer to bring a tutoring program to a couple of remote locations. They are not on recreation sites, but they are at Piedmont Park and Cleveland Avenue. So out there on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays from two to 4 p.m., we have tutors out there that are giving back to the community. They are doing reading activities, playing games with the kids, keeping them engaged. Um, as you guys know, you've had that, that summertime gap that if the kids are in school, they're not engaged in something, they're forgetting some of the lessons they learned in school. They're, their sight words or reading words, um, they, they're not focusing on them. So what we've done is we developed a reading program or a tutoring program at those locations. Um, keep it fun. It is based, it is educational, but it's educational in terms of how Recreation and Parks does it. You know, we play to educate. So we have books that we're reading to the kids and teaching them activities to those books um, and the sight words. Lee, how will the um, clear bag policy affect kids who are coming to the community centers after class with book bags? Um, so we're following the Winston Summerside County School System. We looked at actually implementing uh, the clear bag policy with our after school program, but looking at what the school system is, they haven't moved towards that yet. So we're not going to impede that on our after school participants. Now, if it is children that are walking in from the streets to go play gym, they just won't be allowed to take their bag into the facility or into the gym. Typically, most of our locations have lockers or places they can store, store those bags. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank but you. But we're not going to do anything to prevent the kids that are walking into our facilities from engaging. Hey, Leah, quick question. Yes, um, John. I wanted to throw something out. Uh, I know we've had events at the quarry before. Was, is there any, any way by chance we could possibly look at doing a fall festival out there at some point? I know we've done stuff around July and everything, and uh, but I, I was just thinking, I said, that would be really cool if we could have a fall festival out at the quarry. Uh, I know that's something totally new, but just just a thought. Yeah, we can discuss it. We can look and see what um, our availability of programming. I, typically, we do a, um, a spring festival, and then we usually, our fall festivals are often tied into our um, like the, the Halloween activities that we have at most of our rec centers, you can do that large one at Bolton Park. Yeah, Sean, and plus with the construction that's still ongoing at the quarry, um, mm -hmm. um, it's, it, to do something in the fall, uh, I mean, we make we could maybe look at something next year, but I think that the construction out there is gonna be, is gonna kind of limit us in terms of what we can and can't do at that location. However, um once the construction is complete we do plan on doing a really really nice ribbon cutting um inviting the community uh, back out to that 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 wonderful site and have an opportunity to kind of see what we were able to do with in as part of phase two that sounds good looking forward to that mm -hmm. okay. anything else leah no sir anybody any additional questions for me uh, Leah, you know I'm volunteering at the uh, Carl Russell for basketball. Yes, sir. And, uh, and I know we are working on jerseys. You know when the, we'll be able to get new jerseys for the for the kids. We in the program. will have them in for next year. I think the season's going to be the season's over in the month, correct, Mr. France? 
Yeah, so it went, we yeah, wouldn't be able to get, yeah, we wouldn't be able to get them in, but my goal is to get them in for next season for sure. Yeah, I, I looked in the room that, you know, restored the uh, jerseys. Is there any way they can put shelves in there to keep them from having in boxes? So I will get, they, I'll get with staff and have them make recommendations. Okay. All right, then I just, just wanted to, some yep. of the kids were, were wearing jerseys that triple, triple, uh, triple X and, and they're. Well, I, yeah, you know, well, I also you know saw the, I, yeah, I also saw the date yeah. on those jerseys. I think the jerseys are probably older than some of those kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we are definitely looking into getting some new ones. They have definitely outlived yeah. their shelf life. So yeah, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. And you know, staff have been, you know, we, we work on a very tight budget. You know, we try yeah, to offer a lot and we, yeah. like I said, they've, I yeah, think the jersey said 2017. I was like, I don't even think some of those kids were born then. So, yeah, we're definitely looking at 2016. it. 2016. We got, <laughs> I believe it's 2016. But I believe they were donated. I'm I'm not sure, but I think they were donated. I yeah, think. I don't know. Some of them said car wrestle on them. So, but no, I think, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely open them back up. We're going to look at um, making sure that we have things that. Okay, because we got probably a, agent there. So yeah, it's probably over hundred kids over there in the basketball program. Yep, yep that's I great. It's, it's pretty exciting, and they they like the court, and it I is. like coaching. Okay, <laughs> yeah. but, we uh, appreciate that, and I encourage everybody. Nice. I encourage everybody. <laughs> if you haven't been to Car Russell and check it out, please do. Um, yeah. Staff over there that's been managing it, doing a great job. It's nice to um, it's really nice mm -hmm. when you open your doors back up to the community, and the community reciprocates by showing up. So it's it's been nice. So thank you, John. All right, that's all I have. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Leah. Um, Greg, you'd like to go, go over some of the things going on in the uh, special facilities? Yeah, thank you, William. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this weekend will be out on the golf course. It is the fun golf event that we have. It's the 75th year of the Forsyth Championships. Uh, we're going to be out on three different golf courses, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, on Saturday, uh, Pistara Pythagora will be hosting their Indigenous People Day. Um, it examines some of the relationship between the native population and the Moravians. Um, pretty interesting uh, historical take on it, it was a uh, relationship of trades. So if you do have an opportunity to go out there Saturday, um, it, should be, it should be very interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. As Leah said, we've had uh, several summer camps this year. Uh, we've had adventure camps over at Salem Lake, which are really well attended. Patriots camp over at uh, Historic Bethabra, and still two more weeks left on our Camp Discovery, which is a camp that uh, works with people with disabilities. Um, so all, all very, uh, very successful. Kudos to the staff. They really uh, worked hard on um, bringing a really gratifying experience to the campers. Um, you know, we really try to get a lot of hands-on education, a lot of holistic stuff. So um, it, it's it's really, really good this year. Um, we have our track and field programs going on right now. We have tennis programs going on right now, both of which are full. Uh, soccer registration is open. Um, right now we have 129 kids sign up for our soccer program, which is great. Um, registration goes until the end of the month. So we're in a really good place. Um, we hate to cap a program, but... Um, we might have to look at doing that with the uh, the safety component. And uh, we played quite a lot of soccer being from England, and uh, you don't want any more than seven on the field. So it's a great problem to have. Um, we've we've seen huge increases um, with our with our youth athletic programs, which is, which is really great. Uh, and then finally, um, we have Winston Lake on Golf Now, which is a uh, an app. If you're a golfer, you might have used it. Uh, a lot of extra rounds out there. Our aim is to increase rounds by 15% on Winston Lake. Um, and if it continues in this way, we'll be, uh, we'll be definitely on track. So that is all I have for you today. Any questions for Greg? Yeah, my concern is Winston Lake, I mean, Winston Golf Course. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the greens are still bad. I don't know what Patrick's doing with it but they're still in bad condition. It seems like all of them are in bad condition now. It was just a few, and I don't know uh, what's the problem with them and what can be done with them. Mr. Uh, yeah, hey, hey, Mr. I'm oh, sorry, you go on. No, no, no way, Greg. Um, yeah, I, I've been out on the, on the course several times. So they're, they're, they're doing um, some maintenance, like the, the little par three, I think it's 16, is in some pretty bad shape. Um, there's 
three, four, five, six greens that they're, they're working on. Um, that we are going to have some money invested into the golf course. And I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to talk about William. Um, Patrick went around with Julius um, last week to look at every hole and look at what improvements need to be made. So uh, there'll be some good investment in, in the golf course over the, over the next year. Yeah, and to piggyback on what um, Greg just mentioned, um, we did get a, an additional $1 million for continuing to make some uh, upgrades and address some deferred maintenance uh, issues at Winston Lake Golf Course. <clears throat> But that uh, we also had $719,000 in previous money. So total, we have about 1.7, a little over $1.7 million that will be going back into uh, making additional improvements on Winston Lake Golf Course to include, um, possibly include the following. Um, addressing all of the greens, looking at a green by green uh list in terms of what improvements need to be done to get those back into shape and even if that means replacing totally replacing the greens tree removal fairway shaping um uh and improvements as well as addressing uh and upgrading the tee boxes so we had a meeting out there um went to that golf course maybe a couple of months ago and we looked at um had all the you know eyes and ears at the table to try to feed try to see what would be the best way to move forward with um, with those improvements. And so we're going to, we're going to bring a consultant on board. I think we're going to bring a consultant on board that can kind of go, go through a hole by hole, let us know what needs to be done. Um, especially with the greens and see what we need to do to go ahead and get those replaced, uh, or fixed. Uh, there's also going to be a lot of tree removal, um, on the course there are some trees that need to be additional trees that need to come down. And there are some stumps, trees, old tree stumps that need to be um, ground up and and smoothed out as well. So we have additional money, uh, Mr. France, to to go in there and and make uh, continue to make improvements. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Greg? All right, uh, I'm going to turn it over to our Park Superintendent Renata Owens to kind of go over um, some things that. Uh, She's, they've been working on, uh, they've been extremely busy this summer. Um, I hats off to her and her team for um, sticking with it and continuing to move forward. Renata, would you like to go over a few of the projects and a few of the things that you have going on um, in the maintenance end? Good afternoon. Um, first and foremost, just want to address, I think in the June meeting, there were some questions in regards to the Long Creek project, as well as the Old, Old Town drainage project. Um, Felicia, don't know if you have that. Okay. So basically what we have did, we've went out and I've provided you an update. Um, on your screen right now is the Old Town Drainage Improvement Projects. As you can see, the project basically was for remediation of drainage out there along the ball field, as long as the tennis court, basketball courts, and the walking surface. So as you can see from the picture up in the upper left, you can see where they came through They've actually came in, did some drainage improvements, some regrading and things there to the walking trail. And as you can see on the lower left picture is where they came in off of the walking trail towards the tennis courts. You can see they have come in and put in two additional swells there. So as the water comes over, the water hits the swells and then is fed into the drainage. And so even on all the other ones, you can see where they have come and they've done slope stabilization and things of that nature to channeled the water out and away. One of the things was, I think, um, in regards to <clears throat> some changes that needed to be made that was down on the lower southwest corner of the park at the end of the actual baseball field. In the upper right-hand corner, you can see where they have came down the side of the um, actual walking trail and they have trenched that. And there they have come up and there is a swell right there. That is the location in the corner of that southwest where they have um, actually came in and graded about 250 linear feet of the ditch to eliminate those steep banks there. So also with on that hill, there's a slope stabilization where all of the actual dirt and things that they did, they did and put it back onto the bank. We have seeded, they have grassed and have done all that to provide adequate flowing of the water off of there. In that corner also, they went in and cleared the vegetation out on that far end of that corner there 
which I think was what was actually proposed to them from Council Member McIntosh. One of the things when actually out there at the project, they're looking to do a punch list within the next two weeks. So as far as recreation and parks, your contractor, um, we will be out there and we will take a walk. We will take a look. Things that need to be still maybe some additional work done. All those things will be pointed out. But one of the things that we did notice is at the top of the corner near the playground, when you come down the steps, there is an additional concrete pad that needs to be placed there at that very bottom. That is something we as the city of Winston-Salem will come in and actually prepare due to that was not within the scope of the project. So based upon that, um, we're looking for this project hopefully to be completed. We will say by the end of the week, end of the month. <clears throat> And that is depending upon weather, depending upon additional changes that may need to happen there and any unforeseen circumstances. Any questions? Yes. Can you hear me? I'm having a terrible time with the Zoom. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I just want to clarify something. Um, at the June meeting, my impression was that the department wanted to go ahead with a final walkthrough on this project. Whether I'm wrong or right, I don't know. It doesn't make any difference now, but the area at the Southwest, which is the upper right photograph, uh, at the time of that meeting, nothing had been done there. And that was my issue and my problem with this project was when it was scoped, there was a mistake made by not including the area that you see now in the upper right which was some of the worst erosion in the park. Um, so I went to, as soon as that meeting was over, I called McIntosh and I said, we got a problem here. And he and I went after to uh, Johnny Taylor and somewhat to my amazement, given the incredibly slow process in some places like Long Creek, that swale you see there was built about four days later. Um, so I'm glad it's there because it was missed entirely in the original project. My concern about that was when people go back out there to look again in the, uh, Renata, in the description you've just given of what's coming, you're going to see more erosion out there anyway, on, all along that path, alongside that new swale. It's clearly not as bad as it used to be because the water is flowing down the swale, but it's carrying off some of the surface of the, uh, of the path anyway and collecting in those uh, rocks at the bottom. And it's something that needs to be looked at. It's clearly better. And it's obvious that there has to be uh, a swale there and it's there. And I don't know what the protocol is about cutting the grass and so forth is going in there. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that well enough to, to know whether that's an issue or not, but, but um, it's clearly an improvement, but it's a very tough area because if you go over there now, and I was over there this morning, um, it's, it's, it's eroding again, uh, less severely, but it's carrying the material from the path into the swale and then collecting it all at the bottom. Eventually that's going to be a problem. So uh, I just raised that and, uh, I wouldn't mind, uh, finding out or hearing about when this would be interesting to be there. Okay. So I did a walkthrough also, um, on yesterday of this particular site. And I walked through with my senior crew coordinator for my construction crew. In that we noticed the same things that you noticed. So one of the things we have made, we have came back, we have put our heads together. So once the actual project is complete, we will come in and come through. We noticed that some of, with the swell and the water with the runoff that it is taking some of the sediments and things down with it. So it is going to require us to come back and do some heavy aerating and seeding and matting so that we can get that prepared and get the right growth on there. We also noticed that on the walking trail, one of the things with that particular walking trail is coming back through and grading and probably putting in additional material and then compacting that down so that it will stay. One of the things we looked at also with him was the actual ditch lines there. Some of that is coming through and probably going through redefining some of those ditch lines so that that water will flow per, you know, correctly and also matting that so that that erosion will not you know, continue to run off and you know, continue to keep making the same problems over and over. So we have put our heads together on this. So we do have a plan to put together once the contractor has completed 
because some of those things are not in his scope. As far as he has done, his project will be complete, but we as the city of Winston-Salem, we will come back in and make some additional repairs out there. Okay, um, just one comment. Thank you, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, there is erosion damage, as you point out, in other areas on the south side, and not the south, the west side of the park on the path. There's a pretty good gouge out, which is no longer, no longer expanding i think because most of the water is not flowing elsewhere which is good but if you're going to go around and grade those out that's really terrific because it, it, it would really be a very good uh, walking path if those improvements are made that you're talking about so thank you you're very welcome next felicia okay also what you're looking at is long creek park development also on the same day, went out, made some assessments out there at Long Creek. And as you can see with the pictures there, they have already did the paving. So they've come in and actually repaved the entranceway, your driveway coming through, parking lots, curb and gutter, and things have been put in. So mm -hmm. as you can see, also in the upper left right-hand corner, that is a picture of the new, what they call the bathhouse. So the bathhouse is coming along. Um, things are looking well. Your lower one is your shelter. As you can see, there is still a lot of work out there that they need to do. Um, they're anticipating to be completed within August, late September-ish. It all depends upon the weather, which has been some of their actual challenges out there. Um, we do know there's issues with the pool, but it looks like the pool may not open this year. Um, we do know there are some additional things out there when they start to grading that they need to get this done. Then once they complete their work out there, then we as the city of Winston-Salem the aquatics team, we come in and then that's when we decide we have to do work in the pool. That pool will need to be recleaned again. Um, we will probably be pressure washing and all things like that and trying to get that pool back to where it needs to be stabilized and things. So it's gonna take time. So with that, you will see up under there, you will have a new picnic shelter that will be coming along. Also, once they complete this phase, and I think as Director Royston has said to you, additional money was given to us in the amount of $1 million for limited obligation bonds. We've already spoken with the actual contractor out there as well as the designer, and we're going to start looking at the de design phase of this particular project and actually look at new improved walking paths out there and um, any bridges and things that need to be repaired. Um, so we're looking that just on this phase right here for mid-August is what we're looking for, a punch list. So that punch list is not really a complete turnover to Winston-Salem. We get out there, we take a look, and there's things that they need to fix. So that's why we're looking at maybe an estimated completion could come, you know, end of August, 1st to September around that particular time. But they have made tremendous progress out here. They have had their challenges out there at this particular site. Um, it looks like it's going to be grand. It's going to be great. Um, we look to come in when they finish there and actually us, the city of Winston-Salem, take a look and see what it is that we can come in and actually do for the citizens there. There were some things that was on my plate prior to construction that we will come in and actually take a look at and complete on our own. And overall, I mean, just not just with this project, but you know, again, with many projects uh, across the country, even ones that don't involve the, uh, the city itself, um, there's just been a number of delays, shipping delays, material delays. Um, if you're looking for just lumber, in some instances in large quantities, it's very, very difficult to get. Um, pipe is, and uh, reinforced concrete pipe, plastic pipe, some of those are very, very difficult to obtain. Um, I think that uh, it was our hopes that uh, we could get the pool open this year. Um, that's just, it's just not going to happen. Um, there's just too much work that still needs to be done. And the, the, the site itself just isn't, isn't safe for public use yet. So we'll look to do something, um, have that pool open um, next year uh, and be ready to go. Um, but I, I, at the same time, I think the residents um, there around Long Creek would be happy to see some of these new new improvements that have been made to the site uh, and see that the city is committed to providing quality recreational amenities there at this park location. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
this uh, Zoomathon comes and goes. Um, on the $1 million, which will provide for phase two improvements, uh, it's presumably mostly walking paths. Are those upgrades to the existing cart path? And more than likely, yes. Um, and the original master plan is showed reusing some of the existing cart paths as walking paths. Um, there is a method where you can grade out the shoulders where the, you where the asphalt is in pretty good shape. And then you can pave on top of the old asphalt and create a much wider walking surface. Uh, we've done that on portions of our greenway in the past and it's held up remarkably well. Uh, we would look to do something very similar here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I know we have, to, I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead, no, I'm sorry, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say we have about we have about two minutes left in the meeting. So we want to see if anyone had any additional questions for Renata before she closes it up. Oh, I'm sorry, Renata, you can go ahead. No, I'm fine. That's what I was gonna just bring mine to a conclusion. With that, uh, Chair, that concludes our staff updates. Um, again, we'll get these out. Uh, we'll get these to Felicia so she can get these emailed all the information that's been presented today out to you all in an email. Um, and I'll turn it back over to you. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the updates, everybody. And thanks for uh, attending today. Uh, can I get somebody to propose a motion to adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn, adjourn the meeting for today. No second. All right, well, thanks for your participation, everybody. Yeah, I know taking time out of your day to do this, what's really needed and appreciated. So I'll talk to you next time then. All right. Thank you. You have a great rest of your day. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Felicia. Thanks. You're welcome. Chris, have a great day.